Jorhad Assam, India. On behalf of the entire team of IVW GST 2022, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to day four of the third international virtual workshop on global seismology and tectonics. We are blessed to have with us today Dr. Uh, Opi Mishra, uh, Honorable Director of NCS, Government of India, Professor J.R. Kayal, ex Deputy Director General of Geological Survey of India, as the session chairperson. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today and for showing your continued support and overwhelming response towards this event. Today, we have an announcement to make for all the research scholars, postdoctorates, doctorates, to, uh, postgraduates, graduate students, and all the young researchers. And we would like to encourage all of them for their active participation, to, uh, even towards the end of the lecture sessions. We are happy to announce that we will select three best participants and award them in terms of citation at the end of this workshop. The selection will be done on the basis of three parameters, percentage of attendance, active participation, and quality of question raised. So we look forward to your interactive participation in this workshop. Yesterday, we witnessed a very enlightening lecture from Dr. Jean Hurtbeck uh, on what causes aftershock. This morning, the keynote speaker of uh, today's lecture is well-renowned seismologist, Professor Daping Zhao from Tohoku University, Japan, who will be delivering a talk on the topic seismic structure and dynamics of the Japan subduction zone. The participants will come to know more about him from Mr. Nobojiti Molia, who is a junior research fellow at CSIR NEIC. Now, may I request Mr. Nobojiti to read out an illuminating biodata of Professor Zhao. Over to you, Nobojiti. Thank you, Anvisa. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, a very warm good morning to one and all assembled here. It's an absolute honor for me to introduce the renowned seismologist of 21st century, Professor Da Peng Zhao. Professor Da Peng Zhao has been serving as a professor at Tohoku University, Japan since 2007. Before joining Tohoku University, Dr. Zhao served as professor at Ehimi University of Japan from 2003 to 2007. He had also previously served as research scientist at the University of Southern California and Washington University. After pursuing bachelor's degree in geophysics from Peking University, China in 1984, he studied MS in geophysics from Tohoku University in 1988. He completed his PhD from the same institute in the year 1991. Then until 1995, he carried out postdoctoral research from University of Alaska and Caltech. Professor Zhao's primary research interests include earthquake seismology, solid earth geophysics, and earth's interior structure. He is a pioneer of seismic tomography of the art, seismic anisotropy topography, mapping mantle convection, and even the seismic tomography of the moon. His mantle research is multidisciplinary, incorporating perspectives in volcanism, bloom, and oceanic crust. Professor Zhao has published more than 350 plus research articles in several reputed journals, including Nature and Science, with more than 28,500 citations and ACE index of 87. His most cited Works include tomographic imaging of P and S wave velocity structure Bennett, northeastern Japan, high resolution mental tomography of China and surrounding regions, and many more. He is a recipient of many prestigious awards and honors, such as Excellent Student Award at Peking University in 1983, most cited paper award from 2004 to 2007 by Elsevier in 2008. He was also one of the world top 10 earthquake researchers among 30,670 authors, include according to their publications and citations during 2000 to 2010 by Science Was Clarivet. He has also won uh, Island Art Award from the Geological Society of Japan in 2014. Even in 2016, he was uh, awarded by highly cited research by Elsevier. He has also served as the editor of several journals, including Journal of Asian Art Sciences. Last but not the least, this is just a very brief biodata of research and knowledge and reviewers. Thank you, Professor Zhao, and one and all present here. We are very excited to listen to his keynote lecture today, the topic of which is seismic structure and dynamics of the Japan subduction zone. Now, may I request Ms. Anbesha to take over the further proceedings. Over to Anbesha. Thank you. Thank you, Nobojiti. Now, may I request our session chairperson, 
Professor J R Kyle sir to provide his uh, say few words on this occasion. Okay, over to you, sir. Thank you, Anesha. <clears throat> it is our great pleasure to have Professor Zhao with us in this workshop. Thank you, Professor Zhao for kindly accepting our humble invitation to this workshop. We are collaborating with Professor Zhao, I think since late 90s. And I would say that it is Professor Zhao who introduced Sajmi Tumorgabi study in India, in Northeast India. We work together and for the all strong and large earthquakes in India, like that of Kilari, like that of Bhuj, Andaman, we all came to his laboratory in Japan and collaborated for, to understand the photography structure of these large earthquakes in India. So I think you all know that he is the one of the most renowned world tomographer and today we are lucky that we will be listening to him to understand the tomographic structure of the subduction zone in Japan. Thank you, Professor Zhao. And we, we really look forward to listening to you. Yes, to Professor Zhao, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, may I request uh, Professor uh, Zhao, sir, to uh, take over the digital space and enlighten us with his lecture. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Can you please share the PDF file for me? The PDF file. Santanu, can you share the PDF file for me? Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your kind invitation and thank you for your uh, uh, very kind words uh, by uh, Professor Kayar. We have known uh, each other for more than 20 years, and uh, it's my great honor and pleasure to uh, uh, collaborate with uh, Professor Kayar and later by uh, with uh, Dr. O.P. Mishra, uh, who was uh, introduced by uh, Professor Kayar to me uh, more than 20 years ago. And we had a great collaboration, and we have published several uh, well-cited uh, papers. And I will mention that in my in my lecture. Okay, today, uh, can you hear me? You can hear me, right? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Okay. Okay, great. So today, I want to talk about the seismic structure and the dynamics of the Japan Southern Zone. I have uh, worked uh, uh, for this region for a long time, but today, I want to show you our recent works and uh, some. Uh, of the results are published this year. And uh, this figure shows the tectonic background of the Japan Islands. Uh, we can see uh, the Pacific plate subducting uh, uh, from the west uh, along the Japan Trench and the Kuro Trench beneath the uh, uh, Ohotsuko plate uh, in uh, northern Japan. And in the southwest Japan, the Yang Philippine Sea plate is subducting beneath uh, uh, this region, beneath the Yuashin plate. So in this area, there are four uh, plates uh, interacting with each other, which are the Pacific Plate, Philippine Sea Plate, Ohotsuko Plate, and the Eurasian Plate. So the seismic activity and uh, volcanism are very active uh, in this region. Uh, next, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, the left figure shows the seismicity uh, in and around the Japan Islands. Uh, this is just a four months uh, seismicity. Uh, in uh, 2006. Well, every year is al almost the same. Here, the dot color shows the uh, uh, focal depths. The red dots show the shallow earthquakes, and the blue dots show the deeper earthquakes. So the deeper earthquakes occur in the subducting uh, uh, Pacific slab. The middle figure shows the distribution of more than 2,000 uh, seismic stations on the Japan Islands. And uh, But however, most of these stations are installed on the land area. There are quite a few stations in the oceanic regions. But the uh, red figure shows uh, uh, the recent installed uh, 150 seafloor uh, ice stations. And we have started to use uh, 
uh, data recorded by both onshore and offshore stations uh, to study uh, the seismic structure uh, busy Japan. So thanks to the dense seismic networks on the Japan islands, uh, we have uh, uh, accumulated a lot of uh, very high quality data uh, to study the deep structure and the dynamics of this uh, uh, southern zone. Next, please. Uh, we mainly use a, a technique called seismic tomography uh, to uh, study the structure uh, busy Japan. Uh, I think most of you know uh, this technique is to study the three-dimensional structure of the Earth's interior using uh, seismic wave data. Its principle is the same as a medical CT scan. It is one of the most powerful tools to see the Earth's interior directly. Next, please. <clears throat> Uh, first, let me show you uh, our results uh, for the northeastern Japan region. Next. Okay, so uh, this uh, left figure shows our first tomography beneath uh, northeastern Japan. Uh, we got, uh, we obtained uh, nearly 30 years ago, and it shows the uh, three east west water cross sections uh, from the surface down to 200 km depth. Here, the blue color shows the high velocity. And the red color shows the low velocity, uh, I mean, lower than the area velocity achieved depth. And the white dots show the background seismicity, and the red triangles show the uh, active art volcanoes. So we can see uh, uh, the deeping blue zone very clearly, uh, which represents the subducting Pacific slab. Its thickness is about 90 kilometers. Okay? And in the cross and the mantle wedge beneath the volcanic front and big arc area, we can see the clear uh, low velocity uh, anomalies, which represent the upwelling uh, hot and wet upwelling flow driven, driven by the pre subduction. The red figure shows our more recent result published 10 years ago, the same region and with a better data sets. And uh, we can see uh, the results, the pattern is almost the same. Okay, even uh, you know, uh, in different, uh, we, we obtain the result in different uh, times. Here, I want to mention the red dots. Red dots show the low frequency micro earthquakes, which may uh, uh, reflect the uh, magmatic uh, activity and the fluid migration. So, these uh, low frequency micro earthquakes occur around the Moha discontinuity uh, beneath uh, uh, volcanoes. So, they uh, reflect the magmatic activity. Next, please. Okay, we also determined the seismic attenuation tomography. So this figure shows the uh, six uh, water cross sections of ice level uh, tangential uh, tomography, QS. So uh, here, the blue color shows a high Q, red color shows low Q, strong attenuation. So we can see the pattern of the attenuation is quite similar to the pattern of a sensor velocity. So both the velocity and the attenuation show the uh, major structure features of this uh, typical southern zone. Next, please. We also try to determine the seismic attenuation tomography in this region. So this figure shows the map views of uh, three deeping layers. The figure A shows the image uh, in the central part of the mantle wedge. And uh, figure B shows the image uh, in the central part of the subducting Pacific slab. And the figure C shows the image uh, in the mantle below the slab. Here the color shows the isotropic velocity but the black bars show the first direction of the azimuthal uh, anatropy. So we can see uh, in the mantle wedge, uh, the trench parallel uh, first of direction occurs uh, under the fork region, which may reflect the B type of the beam. But the trench normal first of direction occur under the uh, volcanic front and back area, which reflects the subduction driven corner flow. So in a southern slab, we can see the trench parallel FVD, which reflects the first in anatropy formed at the middle ridge. In the mantle below the slab, we can see the trench normal uh, FVD, faster direction, which reflects the descending atmosphere dragged by the uh, subducting slab. Next, please. OK, uh, this figure shows the period tomography along the megasphere zone. Uh, that is the, the red line in the, in the red figure, cartoon figure. 
it's a boundary between a, a sub-Latin Pacific slab and an overlying uh, Ohotsuko plate. So this this uh, red line shows a uh, uh, is called a mega thread zone. It's a huge uh, thread fault, and the rupture of such fault uh, can generate the uh, mega thread earthquake, such as the uh, uh, 2011 March 11 Toko Toko earthquake with a magnitude of 9.0. And the left figure shows the period tomography of the mega thread zone. And uh, once again, the blue color shows the high velocity, red color shows the low velocity. However, here the velocity variation may not uh, show the temporal variation, but mainly the strength or the uh, sediment of fluids uh, in the uh, mega thread zone. In the figure, the open circles and uh, stars shows the mega thrust earthquakes with a magnitude greater than 6.0. The open circle that shows uh, uh, such a mega thrust earthquakes uh, from 1900 to 2011. That is, which occurred in the uh, past 111 years. But the uh, yellow and red stars show the uh, large mega thrust earthquakes occurred in 2011. The largest uh, star shows a uh, March 11, 2011, uh, Tokoki Meshok with a magnitude of 9.0. So we can see there's a pretty good correlation between uh, velocity variation and the distribution of large earthquakes. And uh, <clears throat> most such mega thrust earthquakes are occurred uh, in the high velocity regions, or the boundary between low velocity and high velocity zones. I need to mention that uh, this is our later work, but the first work uh, published in uh, 2000. Three by Dr. Opi Mishra and myself. Okay, that's the first work we done. So Dr. Mishra did a uh, very important work uh, for this region, and uh, we think so. Uh, certainly, the structural heterogeneity in the mega thrust zone affect the uh, generation of the mega thrust mega thrust earthquakes. Next, please. Okay, so. Uh, here we compare our tomography with the co-seismic distribution of the 2011 uh, huge earthquake. So this uh, red figure shows the distribution of the co-seismic slip of the 2011 uh, 9.0 earthquake. And uh, the purple part shows a large slip uh, on the mega source fault. So we can see uh, such a large slip occurred off the Miyagi area. We should correspond to the high velocity anomalies uh, in our tomography. Okay, so from uh, this uh, comparison, uh, we think a big asperity or a cluster of asperities uh, occur of Miyagi that ruptured during the uh, March 11, 2011 uh, Tokoki earthquake. Next, please. Okay, so exactly one month. After the uh, 2011, March 11, Tokoki, a uh, huge earthquake, a big cross earthquake occurred in the uh, Ohotsuku plate uh, beneath the southern Tohoku. Uh, this is the Iwaki cross earthquake with a magnitude of uh, 7.0, which occurred April 11, 2011, exactly one month after the uh, huge uh, M9 earthquake. So, uh, also, uh, this earthquake was a normal, for, normal fault earthquake in the uh, crust of the over, overriding plate. And about uh, about 100 kilometer north of this uh, uh, earthquake epicenter, there was a Fukushima nuclear power plant area, which is shown in the red square uh, in, the, uh, in the map. Next, please. So we uh, try to uh, determine the high resolution tomography of this area to understand the mechanism of the, this Iwaki uh, crust earthquake. So this figure shows two east-west water cross sections uh, passing through this area. The left side shows a, a cross section AB, which passes through the Nasu volcano and the Iwaki earthquake uh, epicenter, which is shown in the uh, purple star. And uh, the cross section from surface down to 150 kilometer depth. So here, once again, we see the big blue zone, uh, which is the sub latin Pacific slum. And then beneath the volcanoes, beneath the Nasu volcano and also the Asma volcanoes, we can see a lower anomaly, uh, which uh, uh, reflects the arc magma and uh, magmatic fluids beneath the volcanoes. 
However, beneath the Yudosawa fault, uh, which generated the Iwaki earthquake, we can see a clear lower Earth anomaly in the lower crust and uh, upper mantle. Okay, so we think this lower Earth anomaly beneath the uh, Iwaki hypercenter represents the fluids uh, from the uh, Pacific slope dehydration. Interestingly, uh, in the cross section CD, which passes through the Azama volcanoes and also the Fukushima nuclear power plant, we found a similar lower Earth anomaly beneath the Futaba fault, also in the lower crust and upper mantle, even connecting with the Sabalatian Pacific slab. We see a thin vertical lower Earth anomaly uh, beneath this uh, uh, Futaba fault. Okay, we think this also re reflect the fluids uh, coming from the uh, Sabalatian slab uh, related to slab dehydration. So we think if the fluids under the actual force, you know, it may trigger uh, earthquake in the Futaba area close to the uh, to the Fukushima nuclear power plant. So we think we should really pay uh, close attention to the seismic risk in the Fukushima nuclear power plant area. Next, please. <clears throat> okay, so you may ask if the fluids in the uh, earthquake area or in the fault zone caused by the generation of the huge M9 earthquake. So to answer this question, we separate we separate our data set uh, to two uh, sub data sets. One before March 11, 2011. The other uh, data set is uh, uh, after the uh, March 11, uh, 2011. So we uh, we invert the data sets to get a two tomography model. One should be uh, the image before the M9 earthquake. The other is after the M9 earthquake. So the result is shown here. <clears throat> so we can see uh, the image are roughly similar. Okay, and uh, the lower Earth anomalies in the Iwaki South area and the beneath the Futaba South zone are quite similar. So this result suggests that the lower Earth anomalies in the FARC had already existed before the M9 earthquake. Okay, so fluids in the FARC region had no relation to the generation of the huge earthquake. The fluids was were already there. Next, please. Okay, so this figure shows the distribution of 26 big cross earthquakes with a magnitude greater than 6.0, which occurred from 1894 to 2014 in the past uh, 120 years. <clears throat> so among the 26 earthquakes, 10 events occurred in the Fork region. Six events occurred along the volcanic front, and 10 events occurred in the Backhark region. And uh, among the 26 events, seven earthquakes had a magnitude greater than 7.0. Okay, so all these events uh, are quite uh, quite big and caused the damages and even killed the people. Next, please. So we try to use the seismic tomography to determine the detailed structure uh, beneath these large cross earthquakes. So this figure summarizes the P and S wave tomography image. Uh, passing through uh, these earthquake hive centers. They are all east-west water cross sections. Okay, mm -hmm. so we can see uh, <laughs> in the south zone of these large cross earthquakes, we can always see the lower state and uh, high person ratio anomalies, and uh, some even connect with the subducting uh, Pacific slab. So suggesting the fluids from the slab dehydration uh, ascend, uh, ascend to a shared area and even under the actual force in the crust, so uh, uh, triggered the large cross earthquakes. Next, please. <clears throat> okay, so this uh, uh, cartoon uh, summarizes the general uh, process uh, in this uh, uh, subduction zone. We think the pre subduction and the dehydration are very important and the most important factor uh, affecting uh, this region. So uh, the fluids uh, go to the mantle edge and even crust can cause uh, uh, the arc magma and the fluids. So when the fluids enter the large active force, uh, can uh, cause a large cross earthquakes. In particular, uh, in the FARC region, uh, you can see the blue blue patch. Uh, we think uh, it may reflect the water wall uh, beneath the FARC region uh, due to the uh, slab dehydration. So when the fluids, when the water wall 
uh, ascend to the shallow part until the active force, it can cause and affect the generation of large cross earthquakes. Thanks, please. Okay, now let me show you, uh, let me talk about the uh, mechanism of uh, intra-slab earthquakes uh, in the Toko Franco region. Means a large earthquakes occurred uh, in the uh, subletting Pacific slab. And uh, here, uh, in the past 20 years, four big earthquakes occurred in the slab, we call the intra-slab earthquakes, with a magnitude greater than 7.0. Okay, the first is the 2003 uh, magnitude uh, 7.0 earthquakes. Actually, Dr. Mishra and I, uh, we uh, studied this earthquake. Maybe I think this was the first uh, tomography result for the intra-slab earthquake. And uh, Dr. Mishra did an excellent job uh, for imagining the detailed structure of the slab. And uh, we uh, proposed the uh, fluids uh, in the hydrogen faults uh, in the slab uh, caused such intra-slab earthquakes. And uh, after that, uh, three big uh, intra-slab earthquakes occurred. One is uh, 2011 uh, M7.1 intra-slab earthquake, about three weeks following the M9 huge earthquake. And also last year, 2021, there was a, a similar earthquake occurred with a magnitude of 7.1. And this year, about six months ago, uh, on March 16, a b even bigger one with a magnitude of 7.4 intra-slab earthquake occurred uh, in this area uh, of Fukushima. We call it the Fukushima Oki earthquake. Okay. So here, not only the uh, cross earthquakes, uh, mega source earthquakes, uh, intra-slab earthquake also occurred. So here we have, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's like a earthquake museum. We have all kinds of earthquakes in this region. Next, please. So uh, this time we try to use a seismic natural pit tomography uh, to study the detailed structure of the slab and the mechanism of such a uh, intra-slab earthquakes. Okay, first let me show the, uh, let's show the figures. Uh, see the two figures, the cartoon, for the weak azimuth one natural P with a hexagonal symmetry, the symmetry axis is horizontal. So we can determine the uh, faster versus direction uh, in the horizontal plane. For the weak radial natural P, the symmetry axis is vertical, and we can determine whether vertical or horizontal velocity is faster. However, in southern zones, particularly in and around subletting slab, the symmetry axis may not be vertical or horizontal, but could be DP. So we de so recently we developed a new method of a natural peak tomography to map P wave natural P with a DP symmetry axis. The azimuth and deep angle of the fast velocity plane and the uh, strength of a natural P can be determined by inverting P wave travel time data. The fast velocity plane may represent uh, latest preferred orientation LPO of olivine or represent the fault plane in the case of a shape preferred orientation SPO for uh, fractured rocks. Next, please. Uh, this figure shows the distribution of seismic stations and earthquakes we used. Uh, the left figure shows about the two, uh, 2000 seismic stations we used. On the upper uh, red figure shows the distribution of tidal we units we used, and we have about a half a million PVO relative travel time residuals uh, from the tidal we events. The lower red figure shows the uh, distribution of local earthquakes. We have more than 7,000 local events and about uh, 0.7 million uh, PVO data. So in total, we have about uh, 1.2 million uh, travel, time travel time data, which are used to determine the P wave and natural peak tomography. Next, please. Uh, so here's the result we got. The upper two figures show the uh, two vertical cross section uh, beneath uh, North Sea in Japan. Uh, the cross section are from surface down to 250 uh, kilometer depths. The background color shows the isotropic velocity, but the yellow and the red bars show the faster velocity plane of uh, uh, a natural peak. Here, the yellow bars shows a, a natural P faster velocity plane in the subletting slab, and the red bars shows a, a, a natural P uh, in the mantle edge and the, the mantle below the slab. Okay, 
So generally, we can see uh, that the result show that the first of the plane is a mantle wedge, is a trench normal and vertical. So reflecting a subduction driven kernel flow. In the slab, uh, in the upper part of the slab, we can see the first of the plane is a trench parallel and normal to the slab upper surface. So reflecting the normal faults or hydrate intra slab faults, uh, which were produced at the, uh, after the area. Next, please. Okay, so just uh, uh, this year, recently, we published a, a paper in the GRL. We used uh, both the high net uh, onshore uh, stations and the seafloor as net uh, station uh, data to study the fine uh, 3D anisotropic structure of the satellite slab. So the left figure shows the distribution of the earthquakes. The purple square shows the seafloor ice stations. The blue square shows the onshore uh, seismic stations. And the lower figure, the lower left figure, shows the repass uh, from the uh, some of the repass from the uh, local uh, earthquakes. Okay, so the red figure shows distribution of the local events. We used the uh, uh, for the tomography imaging. In total, we used uh, more than half a million period data from uh, about 23,000 uh, local earthquakes. Next, please. So here's the result we got. It shows the three east-west water cross section uh, from the Japan Trench to the uh, volcanic front. And once again, the yellow, the yellow bars uh, shows the fast virus plane in the subarctic Pacific slum. So uh, the result shows that the natural P in the over reading plate shows some uh, uh, north-south variation, but the VP natural P in the slab is quite similar. The fast virus plane is a trend parallel and roughly normal to the uh, slab upper surface. So uh, suggesting uh, buried normal faults that were uh, produced at the after rise area before uh, the, the pre subduction. Next, please. Okay, uh, so this figure shows uh, uh, focal mechanism solutions of the intro slab earthquakes. And we can see uh, one of the nodal plane is a parallel uh, with the first virus plane of VP and natural P in the slab. So suggesting that the intra slab earthquakes were caused by the ruptures of the buried hydrated faults uh, that were produced at the after the rest area before the pre subduction. Next, please. So uh, uh, this, uh, this figure shows a summary of this part. Uh, first, uh, we uh, seek the uh, hydrogen normal faults are produced at the after rise area by the plate upward uh, bending before the pre subduction. And the faults are kept in the slab with the ocean in plate subduction. Uh, our anatropic tomography revealed the trench parallel fast virus plane in the slab upper part, which intersect the slab upper surface at high angles, uh, reflecting the island hydrogen faults uh, in the slab. So ruptures of the hydrogen faults uh, caused the uh, large intra-slab earthquakes. Uh, next, please. Now let me uh, show you results being in southwest Japan. It's good. Uh, this figure shows the uh, east-west uh, uh, water cross section uh, being uh, uh, passing through no northern Kyushu and the Izu uh, area. Uh, the cross section from surface uh, down to uh, uh, 700 km depth. Uh, the two black lines show the 410 and 650 km discount units. So once again, we see a subducting Pacific slab uh, very clearly. And uh, the Pacific slab become flat. Uh, Beneath uh, uh, Western Japan in the lower part of the mantle transition zone. So the upper mantle above the Pacific slab form a big mantle wedge. Okay. And uh, in the upper mantle, we can see a subletting uh, Philippine Sea slab showing a PHS here. Okay. And the red triangle shows the active arc volcanoes. So we can see a clear lower anomaly above the uh, Philippine Sea slab. Okay. It represents the upper mantle flow uh, caused the subduction of the Philippine Sea slab which uh, feed uh, the arc volcano in Kyushu. But uh, uh, above the Pacific slab, 
we can see a big uh, lower than normally uh, deep in the uh, west world uh, and reaching the Philippine Sea slab. So this reflects the upwelling flow associated with the deep, deep dehydration of the Pacific slab. Okay, so uh, and the lower than normally uh, even reach the uh, Philippine Sea slab, uh, which caused the uh, soft, uh, which made the Philippine Sea slab soft. So the seismicity in the Philippine Sea slab only occur down to about 180 kilometers. However, we can see the aseismic Philippine Sea slab down to about 400 kilometer depth. Next, please. Uh, we also try to determine the more detailed structure of the uh, Philippine Sea slab by using data from uh, uh, both the Korean and the Japanese seismic networks. So the left figure shows the distribution of the seismic stations in uh, South Korea and the Western Japan. The red figure shows the distribution of the PV repass we uh, used from both local earthquakes and uh, teleseismic events. Next, please. Uh, so here's the result we got. It shows the uh, nine uh, east west water cross sections uh, from surface down to 700 km depths. And uh, once again, we see the uh, subducting Pacific slope clearly in all the cross sections, uh, which is located at the lower part of the mental transition zone. But in the upper mantle, we can see uh, the subducting Philippine sea slab in most cross sections. However, in the A2 and A3 cross sections, we cannot see the uh, Philippine sea slab. So we think uh, there should be a, a, a hole or window, slab window uh, in the Philippine sea slab. Next, please. So this figure summarizes, uh, shows the geometry of the Philippine Sea Slab in East Western Japan. Okay. The shallow part of the Philippine Sea Slab, down to about the 200 km depth, is uh, uh, seismic, means earthquakes, intra slab earthquakes occurred uh, with the subducting Philippine Sea Slab. However, the Philippine Sea Slab itself, uh, subducting down to a 400, even 500 km depth, beneath the Japan Sea and the western. Uh, and western part of Kyushu without earthquakes. So the A size of the Philippine Sea slab exists uh, down to the deeper part of the upper mantle. Next, please. Uh, we also try to estimate the age distribution of the Philippine Sea slab. Okay, so here the color shows the age of the uh, Philippine Sea slab. The slab age ranges from about uh, 15 million years to 45 million years uh, in the in this region. So being the Western Kyushu, being the Western Kyushu, the Philippine Sea Slab is very old, about 40 uh, million years. But being the key peninsula, the, the, the central part, the red part <laughs> here is it, young. The Philippine Sea Slab is young, only about 15 uh, million years. And here, the red triangle shows the volcanoes, and the open circles and uh, white stars show the large cross earthquakes. We can see uh, there are more big cross earthquakes in the area above the, uh, the young part of the sea slab. So it seems the age of the Philippine sea slab also affects the generation of the large cross earthquakes in the overlying plate. Next, please. Okay, so one of the big earthquakes in the Western Japan is a 1995 Kobe earthquake with a magnitude of 7.2, which killed more than 6,000 people. And uh, this uh, left figure shows a three, uh, sort of one water cross section uh, passing through the Kobe South area. The upper panel uh, shows a PV tomography, the middle panel shows the ISO tomography, the lower panel shows a personal ratio. So uh, we can see uh, in the south zone shown in the uh, star, the, the black star shows a uh, hypercenter of the Kobe earthquake. And we can see very clear low velocity and high person ratio uh, anomaly in the uh, Kobe hypercenter. We think it uh, represents the cross of fluids because in this area, there's no active volcano and uh, no uh, very high heat flow anomaly on the surface. So we think the low velocity and high person ratio anomaly uh, reflects reflect the uh, uh, cross of fluids and which trigger is a Kobe earthquake. The left figure, the left upper figure shows a north-south water cross section 
uh, passing through this area. Uh, the cross section from surface down to 100 km depth. And we can see uh, the subletting Philippine Sea Slab. <coughs> Excuse me. Clearly. And uh, we can see lower is normally uh, in the mantle above the uh, Philippine Sea Slab, and uh, which refers to fluids uh, from the slab dehydration. <coughs> I'm sorry. And uh, we think uh, the lower, lower cartoon uh, shows uh, the process of slab, de slab dehydration and the fluids under the actual force, which triggered uh, the cover earthquake. Next, please. Okay, so this figure shows three vertical cross sections uh, in the western Hongxiu area. And here, the red triangle shows a, a Dyson volcano. And the left column shows a, a water cross section AB, which passes through the epicenter of the 2000 Vesta Tortoli earthquake, okay, uh, with the magnitude 7.3. And uh, which is shown in the black star. And the red column shows the cross section uh, EF. It's a northwest southeast uh, cross section passing through the hypercenter of the 2016 Tortoli earthquake with the magnitude 6.6. .6. And the middle column shows the east west cross section passing through the Dyson volcano and the two big earthquakes. And we can see beneath the uh, uh, Dyson volcano, there's a very clear uh, red zone. Lower less than high person ratio anomaly, uh, which represents the magma chamber beneath the volcano. And the upper row shows the PV tomography, middle row shows the SV tomography, and the lower row shows the uh, person ratio anomaly. And once again, the red dots show the low frequency micro earthquakes, which reflects the migration of magmatic uh, fluids. So in this figure, we can see a closer correlation between the uh, magma chamber beneath the Dyson volcano and also the uh, large cross earthquakes, okay, and the fluids. So uh, there's a clearly uh, earthquake volcano interaction in this area. So volcanoes, magma beneath the volcanoes can affect earthquakes, but the earthquake generation can also affect the uh, migration of the fluids and the magma. So there are certainly uh, earthquake volcanoes certainly can affect each other. Next, please. Uh, this figure shows the deeper structure beneath this, this region, okay? It shows three north-south water cross section uh, passing through the Dyson volcano and the Kanaba volcano uh, in this area. The cross section from the surface down to a 700 kilometer depth, okay? And uh, the upper row shows the SV tomography, the middle row shows a uh, uh, personal ratio. The lower row shows the image of R value. The R value, R value is uh, defined here, shown in the red words. It's a ratio between the uh, VS reduction and the VP reduction. So uh, some experimental studies show that when the R value is greater than 1.8, melt may exist. Okay. So we can see a uh, we can see a subatlantic Pacific slab once again in the mental transition zone. And uh, also we can see the deeper earthquakes occur actively uh, in the Pacific slum. Excuse me. And uh, we can see clearly uh, low velocity anomalies. The, the red zone occur uh, below the Philippine Sea slum and above the Pacific slum. In the shallow part, uh, down to about 200 km depth, we can see the light blue, light blue zone, uh, beneath the Hongxiu. Uh, that is a subletting Philippine Sea slab. That's a young slab, so it's quite thin. Okay, Pacific slab is quite old, about uh, 100 million years. So the thickness is nearly 100 kilometer. And uh, so certainly we can see a big low velocity and high personal ratio anomaly uh, exist in the deeper upper mantle above the Pacific slab and below the Philippine Sea slab. So which reflects the hot and wet upwelling flow, which may uh, heat the Philippine sea slab uh, from below. So certainly we can see uh, in this area, not only the, the shallow structure, but also the deeper structure may affect the, the volcanism and also the earthquake generation. Next, please. 
Okay, so uh, in uh, 2016, a big earthquake occurred in the uh, central Kyushu. Uh, this is a Kuomoto earthquake with a magnitude 7.2, which killed tens of people. <clears throat> and uh, this figure shows uh, four vertical cross sections passing through the hypercenter of the Kuomoto earthquake. The left figure shows the PV tomography, and the red figure shows the SVU tomography. And uh, here, the Kuomoto hypercenter is shown in the black star. And the red triangle that shows the uh, Aso volcano, Kujiu, uh, Tsurumi volcanoes. And uh, once again, we see the shadow zones uh, beneath uh, uh, these uh, three uh, arc volcanoes. But uh, the Kuomoto earthquake occurred in the hybrid region, the blue zone, in the upper crust. However, in the uppermost mantle, we can see the lowest anomaly extend uh, beneath uh, uh, the hypercenter of the Kuomoto earthquake. So once again, we think that the earthquake volcano interaction in this area. Next, please. Uh, in this area, we also try to uh, uh, determine the uh, size of attenuation, P and SV attenu uh, attenuation, QPQS, and also VPVS, and also person ratio, and uh, QPQS uh, ratio. So this figure shows the six, the tomography of six parameters uh, beneath uh, uh, this uh, uh, cross section. It uh, passes through the uh, Kuomoto earthquake area and also the three volcanoes. So we can see clearly uh, these volcanoes, uh, these uh, uh, low velocity and high position ratio, low velocity, low Q, high position ratio anomalies, uh, which reflect the arc magma and the fluids. Next, please. Okay, so this figure shows a, a similar image uh, being the Aso volcano uh, in the left, and in the right shows the Kujiu uh, volcano. We, we found similar features being these active volcanoes. So the, uh, these volcanoes are certainly caused by the uh, corner flow in the mantle edge and uh, uh, fluid from the uh, dehydration of the Pacific uh, Philippine Sea slab. Next, please. Okay, so uh, in the northern Kyushu, uh, there's a, a very special structure called the Baipu Shimabara Graben, which is a poor part in the north south uh, direction. Okay, so uh, all the three uh, volcanoes are so Kujiu, Tsurumi uh, volcanoes, and also Wenzhen in the in the in the middle uh, in the second section uh, B cross section. You can see the the western part show the Wenzhen volcano. So the fall. Volcanoes and also Kuomoto earthquake all occurred in the Bay uh, Graben. Okay, and uh, so this uh, uh, tomography shows the cross section along the curved uh, graben and uh, VPVS and the person ratio. So once again, we see a very strong low velocity anomaly uh, in the mantle wedge beneath the volcanoes and also beneath the hypercenter of the Kuomoto earthquake. And our result shows that. The Baipu Shimabara Graben was caused by three factors, joint effects of three factors. One is the westward extension of the media tectonic line, which is a huge uh, strike through force in uh, uh, southwest Japan. The second factor is the northward extension of the Okinawa Trough uh, in the western, western part. And the third factor is the hot up valley flow in the mental edge and reveal, revealed by our tomography. So the by pushing about the graben was caused by the effect of the three factors. Next, please. Okay, so uh, we also made uh, extensive studies uh, for the larger earthquakes in the uh, Asia uh, continent region. Uh, for example, the famous uh, uh, result is uh, uh, done by Professor Kayar and Dr. Ovi Mishra uh, with me uh, for the uh, 2001 in the uh, Bujia earthquake with a uh, magnitude 7.8 or 7.7. .7. And uh, so we found a very clear low velocity and high person ratio anomaly in the south zone of this uh, Bujia earthquake area. And we published this paper first in uh, 2012 uh, GRL, uh, first author by Dr. Professor Kayar. Then uh, our second paper published in 2003 in EPSL. So I'm happy to see uh, uh, these papers are highly cited. And uh, this uh, lower lower left figure shows the image uh, in the 2008 uh, Wenchuan earthquake area uh, done by Dr. Lei and myself. 
uh, we published it in the 2009 in the Gcube. And also uh, the upper right figure should image uh, in the south zone of the two big earthquake in the eastern China. One is uh, one occurred uh, 300 years ago in 1679, Sun earthquake with magnitude 8.0, close to uh, Chinese capital Beijing. Uh, the second is uh, 1976, Tangshan earthquake with magnitude 7.8, which also close to Beijing. And this, uh, uh, the two earthquakes killed a lot of the people. And uh, the lower right figure shows the image is the uh, 1927 Gulang earthquake in the Western China. Okay, so all these earthquakes, uh, all the results show that the low velocity and the high pulse ratio occur in or below the hypercenter of such uh, large earthquakes. So suggesting the nucleation of these uh, continental earthquakes uh, was also uh, affected by the cross of fluids, our low cross of flow on the Tibetan plateau uh, region. Next, please. Okay, so finally, in conclusion, the subatlantic Pacific and the Philippine sea slabs are imagined clearly as high velocity anomalies. Low velocity zones exist in the mantle edge and the volcanic front and the Bay Carker area, uh, reflecting the arc magma and uh, fluids from the slab dehydration. The Pacific slab becomes a flood in the mental transition zone on the southwest of Japan and East Asia. A big mental wedge has formed above the Pacific slab, uh, which affects the, uh, the formation of the interplate volcanoes. The Philippine Sea slab has subsided asymmetrically without earthquakes down to about 450 km depth on the western Japan and the South Korea. A slab window appears in the asymmetric Philippine Sea slab. The 2011 Tokoki uh, mega source earthquake sequence was caused by the uh, structural heterogeneities in the mega source zone, uh, such as the seamounts, sediments, and the fluids. Arc magma and the fluids from the slab dehydration may affect the generation of large cross earthquakes. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for such a wonderful and educative lecture. Uh, before moving ahead, I would like to announce that uh, we will take three queries from the attendees. Uh, although we have enabled the chat box of the Q&A session, it appears that it is not working for many of them. Therefore, may I request the participants query to kindly raise your hands and accordingly, we may ask you to unmute yourself. Uh, to uh, clear your query from the speaker. Also, the participants may please send the rest of their unattended questions to the email ID of the convener of this workshop, who will send the questions to the concerned speaker and ask him for his kind responses to the queries. And then we'll send the responses to your respective email IDs. Uh, further, we'd also, also like to mention that these questions uh, that are sent via email will also be considered by the convener in evaluating and selecting the participants for the award to motivate the young researchers and students for their active involvement in this workshop that was announced at the beginning of this session. Thank you. Now, uh, we are glad to uh, mention that uh, we have two former students of Professor Zhao. So now may I request uh, Honorable Director uh, Dr. O.P. Mishra from NCS to say a few words uh, on this lecture. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh... I think uh, I'm really spellbound on listening the comprehensive lecture from crux to climax on seismic tomography. You understand what I mean? From fundamental to the, to the high level advanced seismic tomography research, its implications to each and every, its intricate issues of the gener earthquake generating processes, role of heterogeneity, how it was related its resolutions, its interrelationship with the other geophysical anomalies. I think Professor Jhao has addressed, I think nothing beyond that. So once we lecture, li listen to the lecture of Professor Jhao, it, it gives the answers of the numerous questions already. So there is no questions leave actually 
left for asking. So thank you, Professor Jao, for your such a nice lucid lecture. Mint for the students, mint for the researchers, mint for the academicians, mint, mint, mint for the your students like me who learn from cracks, cracks from you. And I always think that I'm learning new thing from your lecture. Always. Every lecture is giving you the new lessons to, to us. And it is very good. And you love Indians. You know, I, I, I would like to tell in front of this, uh, the, 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 in front of you that on writing that Professor Zhao trusts the Indian researchers too much. You know, that's why he has a very busy schedule. But once Santanu Barua is requesting, Professor Kayal requesting, maybe uh, <laughs> Sensei is not re 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 accept my request, but, but when the request comes from them, because you know that Misra is my student, but always the Indian request comes, he, he give the first priority. And uh, I am really grateful to you, Sensei, that you have accepted, given the, your knowledge, educations, and it is actually now, seismic tomography is the structural seismology. Without tomography, we cannot fire inside the, 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 the deeper earth. It is a tool for geologists. You cannot do the deeper geology without tomography. And you know that this is the, actually the efficacy. Professor Zhao utilized almost all domain of the seismic tomography, whether it is the travel time tomography, noise tomography, anisotropic tomography, so many things, attenuation tomography, everything he addressed, Poisson's ratio, crack density, saturation rate, so many things he combined and he put forth to the people that this is actually the product. So I have no word to express much to my teacher who is so humble, he's so kind to give the lessons to us. Very good presentation, sir. And uh, we learned a lot. And I, I request all my researchers, young researchers, you, uh, Antara and all uh, Barua team, that we have spread sensei lecture to the, to the young researchers. We may have a very good workshop. I am planning in India when Professor Jha will come on seismic tomography in Indian lecture. I am talking to my government Ministry of Earth Sciences and National Center for Seismology, where the, you all will be there. And I think Professor Jha will give a ignited uh, workshop to all the young researchers. Professor Jha, Sensei, I'm really grateful to you for your such kind lecture, comprehensive lectures. We learned a lot. And we wish that your good health, sound health, all cheerfulness so that you can guide us. Thank you, Sensei. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Uh, now we have another former student of uh, Professor Zhao, uh, Dr. Sandeep Gupta from CSIR NGRI India. So uh, may I request uh, Dr. Sandeep Gupta, sir, to say a few words on this session. Over to you, sir. Yeah, good afternoon, Professor Zhao. Hi, good to see you. Yeah, it is pleasure. And uh, I should admit that I have a privilege and honor to work or to learn from Professor Zhao. He is not, as uh, Professor Mishra told, he is excellent teacher and human being. So whatever I am today as a seismologist in India, a lot of contribution goes to, certainly goes to Professor Yao. And certainly guide from, guidance from the, uh, Dr. Mishra, who always motivated me to work hard and uh, learn a lot from Professor Yao. So uh, as anticipated, he is very close to students. Uh, so he, in his talk, everybody must uh, agree that uh, he covered all the topics from the scratch to higher level of tomography. So uh, I can, uh, I, I used to have his knowledge through his papers, through his, uh, through our interaction. So I give more opportunity to the students so that they can ask a question from him, which Professor Zhao would like more than if we say anything about him. Thank you once again, Professor Zhao. Thank you. Thank Thanks you very much. much for the words. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, may I request our honorable session chairperson, Professor Kayal, sir, to say a few words on this session. Over to you, Kayal, sir. Thank you, uh, Anusha. Uh, I think uh, in, in Opie's words, I agree fully agree with it that it is a spellbound lecture. We have no words to really appreciate or to really, you know, comment on this lecture. It was just a spellbound lecture. And I think it is Professor Zhao only who can 
handle <laughs> so millions of data and for the whole you know all uh, he is working and but in particular now we have seen all the japan trench and philippine trench uh, structure and you now so again i repeat we have no words professor jao thank you so much for a wonderful presentation and educate us with lot of information now just uh, i have a little query about the castel earthquakes after the tohoku earthquake after the mega earthquake that was the largest castel earthquake that occurred uh, after the uh, tohoku earthquake the 2011 mega earthquake that was the largest castel but what was the largest aftershock in the uh, after that uh, mega earthquake and that was in the slab i suppose uh no uh, that's very good question uh actually uh, <clears throat> the largest uh, aftershock of the huge earthquake occur on the same day march 11 2011 with the magnitude 7.5 okay that's a uh, that's a uh, three three uh huge uh, aftershocks with the uh, magnitude 7.5 on the same day and okay. also uh, okay. after a few years also a few uh M7 class earthquake also occurred, the megathrower type on the okay. megathrower zone. Of course, if you see the intraslab earthquake and also cross earthquake, also a kind of aftershock, <coughs> you know. Thank but you, the, the megathrower type aftershocks occur on the same day, a few hours after the yes. main shock, yes. and also a few years after the after the uh, mission. Yes, I, 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 I can understand that. Place. Yes, I was wondering that there may, must be a lot of, you know, aftershocks of magnitude more than 7.5 7 or whatever. Right. So that is, uh, that was the, I think, largest uh, earthquake triggered by the, in the coastal area, in the, in the, in the, in the continental part. I think right. that is the largest earthquake that was triggered by mm -hmm. this mega earthquake. Yes. You're right. Yes. You're certainly right. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. One more query. Um, a little bit, uh, you know, uh, I have a query that how the fast velocity plane is normal to the subducted plane. Just uh, normally along the subducted plane, we, we expect the high velocity plane. But you have observed it is perpendicular to the subducted plane. Could you please little uh, shed yes. some light on this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the first of us plan is a net choppy. Use a net choppy. Okay. We found okay. that the, such a first of us plan of a net choppy represent the buried faults in the slab. Right. Okay. You know, in the in the after rise area, the plate bend upward, which called a normal yes. fault in yes. the after rise yes. area. Such a force are buried, buried in the slab and subtracting with the ocean plate. Okay, so the force yes. still exists there after slab subtraction. But such a fault could be reactivated, then generating the intra slab large earthquakes. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. And we found such a, such a uh, fast of plane normal to the slab upper surface represent the faults, the interest level faults. Okay. We, okay. We got, the, we got the information so on the interest level faults from assessment and net therapy. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I understand. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, over to Nessa, please. Okay. So assessment net therapy is a very, very useful parameter. Yes. To characterize the dynamics, also the 14. 14 process. Thank you, sir. Now, okay, over to Opie Mishra, sir. Sensei, one just, uh, it is not a question, just I I need to know that uh, you remember uh, in the intra slab Miyagi Oki earthquake in 2004, yes. uh -huh. we have written a paper in the GRL. Right. And uh, we given the interpretation that it was due to dehydration in retailment. Dehydration right. in the intra slab. 
Sanjay, any other interpretation you have found out in these periods other than dehydration, embrittlement, any explanation uh, from your recent research? Or that is the only... I think you are, your proposal still works. Okay. Oh, so uh, you're still you. right. And I hope you will be all, always right. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, thank you for that. We found, uh, uh, we found such a false, you know, uh, widely exist, not only a few. You know, I think with such a false, you said everywhere in the slab because the slab upward bend, so cause normal faulting in the after reservoir. area. All the slab must uh, undergo such a process. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you very much. Okay. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, for from the participants, do we have any questions? Uh, if anyone have any query, then they may please uh, unmute themselves and ask the questions directly. Okay, so uh, over to Dr. Dabajir Hazurika, sir. Sir, you may please unmute yourself. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving wonderful talk, and we really enjoyed. Actually, I have no questions to ask, but I would like to just compliment that, like uh, Dr. Opi Mr. Sir and Dr. Ziyatar Shah told that always your lecture is very much fascinating, and I, I it was really uh, interesting to see so much of huge data set and how you are handling that. I already in the last time also I was really we it was a very fascinating thing for us. And um, these are our dream that we can sometimes uh, we can also do such kind of you know data set and so wonderful uh, work you have presented. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. So we have another raised uh, person. I think uh, Chittaranjan BGR from BGRL. Over to you, sir. Uh, you may please unmute yeah. yourself and ask the question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, now it is audible. Hello. 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 Hello, madam. It is audible now. Yes, you are audible. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, madam. Actually, uh, yeah, very, uh, very nice question. Uh, uh, I have a very hundred questions uh, that. Uh, uh, you also uh, that uh, have seen that uh, the CCD, that uh, low frequency micro IP. So, uh, what is actually uh, the frequency that is correct time uh, that low uh, low frequency uh, the micro IP in the subduction zone? I'm sorry, I I cannot hear clearly. Nishal Kun, can you can you say that to Please, me again? Please, uh, you are not very clear. Yeah. Please be loud and clear. Nishira-san, can you say that to me again? Maybe we have some technical glitches. Some sir? Yes, sir. Uh, OK, so any more uh, queries? Uh, you may please unmute yourself and then ask your queries directly. So you you asked Chitranjan that he can write a query in a in a query box. He can write his yes. question in English. Okay. You so can, uh, you can read, you if can read and then tell Sensei. Chitranjan, you can write your questions and then send. Otherwise, I will give you answer if you have a query. Yeah, I think uh, Nishra san and also Professor Kair understand all my signs. <laughs> yeah, I think you may you may kind of answer some of them later, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so sir, I think uh, we don't have to continue. So. Sir, in the National Center for Seismology, there is called a borehole geophysical research laboratory. You remember that reservoir induced seismicity, Dr. H.K. Gupta, seismologist of the country, had worked his PhD thesis in 1967, and uh -huh. there is now extensive research for intraplate type of the earthquake in BGRL, Borehole Geophysical mm -hmm. research, research Laboratory in Karad, which is, comes under the NCS of which I am director. So now India is working on that, and this Chitranjan 
has just joined as a project scientist. He is also a good researcher. Earlier he was working in National Geophysical Research Institute, where Sandeep Gupta is working. Now he I joined see. our team. So everybody fascinated to use your science. That is science of tomography. So okay. he has a lot of things, but maybe we'll able to see that what question he has. Okay, great. Thank you for the information. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think we don't have any more queries. Uh, if anybody has any queries, then they may please uh, send to the email ID of the convener and uh, he will try to send it to the concerned speaker and uh, forward you the replies. Okay, uh, so okay. with this, we have almost come to the end of the lecture session. Now, may I request Mr. Prasurja Borthakur, uh, Junior Research Fellow at uh, CSR NEIST, to uh, deliver the vote of thanks. Over to you, Prasurja. Uh, thank you, Anisha. Namaskar and good morning to all. As today's event has come to an end, it is my immense pleasure to convey heartfelt thanks to each and everyone on behalf of entire CSI NIST family and the organizing members of IBWGST. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Professor Dapan Jhao sir for accepting our invitation and delivering such an educative talk on seismic sir and dynamics of Japan subduction zone. Thank you once again for such a wonderful and edifying lecture. It was a great pleasure to have you uh, with us as a keynote speaker for this event. Our deep sense of gratitude goes to our honorable director, sir, Dr. Jean Aranhari Sastriji, for his tremendous support and guidance in each and every step of the workshop. Our heartfelt appreciation to the international advisor, Professor Andrew J. Michael USGS, for his thoughtful insight on the conduction of the live sessions. I further take this opportunity to express my profound gratitude to the session chairperson, Professor J. R. Kyle, sir, former Deputy Director General, GSI Government of India, and Sessions co person Dr. Vivit Suryanto from UZM Indonesia, and Dr. Debozit Hazarika, Wadia Institute of Himalayan Geology for providing needful guidance. I'd also like to thank the special guest of today's session, Dr. O.P. Mishra, sir, Director NCS, for his kind presence, despite of his busy schedule. I'd like to thank Dr. Santonu Borwa, sir, convener of IBWGST 2022, for his devotion towards this international workshop. We sincerely thank him a lot for providing us this amazing platform to listen and interact with such prominent intellectuals around the globe. A special thanks goes to the members of technical and organizing committee for their months of hard work and dedication. Last but not the least, I express my deep sense of appreciation to all the attendees for their active participation in today's event, without whom this, is, this event would not have been a success. We, the IBWGST team, wish for your continued support throughout this event and look forward to see you all in our next session tomorrow, certainly at 9 a.m. Indian Standard Time. Our keynote speaker for tomorrow's session is CP Rajendran, NIS Bangalore, and he will be delivering talk on medieval past of earthquake in central Himalaya and seismic hazard in this area. On this note, we're signing off from today's event. Namaskar and Hanabad. Over to Anishwa. Okay. Thank you, Professor Joe. Thank you, uh, thank you uh, sir. Thank you. With this, we have come to the end. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We would thank like to so end much. it here. Yeah, thank, thank you. you sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir